Today we're going to be taking a look at this shotgun microphone made by Comica. It's the CVM V30 Pro. This mic has a super cardioid polar pattern. It has a low cut filter. It has 10 decibel adjustable sensitivity. It has a frequency range of 40 hertz to 20 kilohertz. It has a 100 decibel dynamic range. It has a max SPL of 114 decibels. It connects via 3.5 millimeter jack. It operates off of two AAA batteries. The batteries will last 200 hours. And this microphone kit also includes a wind muff. Now that we've gone over all the specs, let's go ahead and jump into the unboxing. Hey there, my name is Adrian with projectramos.com and dealsbypr.com. On this channel, I do tech reviews. So if you're new here, consider subscribing. We get a thank you card from the manufacturer. Here is the user's manual. Looks like we'll get a warranty card. Here is the wind muff and it looks like it has a tag here to show you where to insert the, uh, the microphone. Here's a microphone. Looks like the company name and the model number is imprinted here. Here's the 3.5 millimeter jack. This is the shock absorber, hot shoe mount. On the back of the microphone, we have a high pass filter and the on and off switch, as well as the 10 decibel boost. This is where you insert the AAA batteries. It takes two batteries. To quickly demonstrate here, this is how you install the wind muff onto the microphone. Once you have the wind muff on the microphone, this is what it looks like. You have the uh, hot shoe mount that comes out of this cutout, and then the back of the microphone comes out of the uh, back cutout of the wind muff. We're now recording outdoors using the wind muff on the shotgun microphone and there's quite a bit of ambient noise. Uh, there's a little bit of wind going on right now and there's a main street where cars are passing by so I'm not sure how much of that audio is being picked up here. Uh, but we'll go ahead and flip over the uh, camera to see how it captures the audio from the back of the microphone and see if it picks up some of the cars out on the street. All right, so we have the camera now pointed out to the main street. And as you can see, there's cars passing by. Not sure how well that audio is being captured. But my voice is now coming from the back of the microphone. So we'll compare that and see what that sounds like uh, once we review the video. We're now recording this segment of the video using the shotgun microphone without the wind muff. And again, there's uh, cars passing by. As a matter of fact, there's a uh, plane passing uh, overhead so we'll see how uh, that audio is captured on the microphone so now what I'm going to do is flip the mic over to the street here and see how much of the uh, cars passing by see how much of that audio it picks up we now have the camera pointed out to the street and as you can see there's cars passing by and we'll see how my voice picks up from the back of the microphone now we're going to go ahead and take the sample audio review it and come back with our final thoughts we're now recording using the shotgun microphone mounted on top of our Canon 80D. It doesn't have the wind muff installed because we're in a controlled environment. There's no wind going on, so there's no need for that. So we'll go ahead and uh, listen back to this audio and come back with our final thoughts. First, let's talk about the build and design of this shotgun microphone. Overall, I think the manufacturer did a really good job at the design of this microphone. It's a standard design. However, the features that are built in, I think, uh, work really well, starting with the shock mount on this mic. If you're going to be using uh, your camera as a vlogging camera and you plan to use this mic for that um, vlogging kit, as you move the mic or the camera around, you're going to be, there's going to be a lot of vibration and this shock mount will be able to absorb that vibration so that the microphone doesn't pick up the vibration noise. So as you can tell here, as I move this around, the mic 
does move around, but it's not uh, picking up that vibration. It won't pick up that vibration noise on the mic. Uh, the shock absorber is going to absorb most of that vibration. The back of the microphone has basically two switches. One switch is for the high pass filter. Very simple, it's either off or on. Then you have the on and off switch here, and the on and off switch has two positions. The middle position is to, uh, will enable the 10 decibel boost. And as soon as you turn that to either the middle position or all the way uh, to this side, right away a green LED light turns on to let you know that the microphone is turned on. So if you want to, the uh, 10 decibel boost, you put that in the middle. If you don't want the 10 decibel boost, then you move it over all the way to this side and then it's now operating in its normal function. And then to turn it off, you just switch it over to the off position and now the microphone is turned off. So overall, build and design, I think the, mic, uh, the manufacturer did a good job there. The only, um, probably about the only drawback I can find with this mic is the fact that the cable is fixed to the mic. It's not a removable cable. Uh, I don't know how that's going to play long term if that this is going to become a problem if um, you know if the cable becomes um, broken or you know from using it over and over and over it may not be an issue at all for you uh, but just do keep in mind that the cable is not removable it's fixed so if this cable stops functioning then you're pretty much uh, gonna have to get another mic next let's talk about the setup and operation of this microphone setup very simple it has the hot shoe mount this goes over your camera you tighten that down and you're good to go you plug this into the uh, microphone input of, of your camera and that's it All right, and then after that as far as the operation goes as i mentioned you just turn the microphone on you either have the 10 decibel boost on or you just have it uh, just regular on and that's it microphone is good to go there um, you also get one more option here. It does have a quarter inch um, mount here. So if you want to mount this microphone on, let's say a tripod, you can easily do that using that quarter inch mount. So all you gotta do is just screw that on to the quarter inch mount and you're good to go. So you have a lot of options with this mic, but as far as the setup and operation, real simple, real straightforward. Uh, the microphone wind muff, slides on very easily and then uh, as you were able to see in our demonstration and then it just goes over the back of the mic and you're good to go then so set up an operation very simple very straightforward now let's talk about the sound quality of this microphone sound quality is probably one of the biggest aspects one of the biggest factors of deciding whether or not a microphone is good or not and i think the sound quality that comes out of this microphone is pretty good um, I don't think you're gonna need a lot of post-processing. So if you're gonna use the audio as is, I think uh, the audio coming out of this mic sounds pretty good as you were able to uh, hear in our demonstration. Now, if you do a little post-processing, you know, a little compression, a little EQ, that is definitely gonna improve the quality of the sound coming out of this microphone. But if you don't wanna do any post-processing, I think the sound quality coming out of the mic sounds really good. Um, as far as picking up the sibilance of my voice, um, the mic didn't really pick up a whole lot of sibilance there. So there's an EQ cut there that sounds uh, really good straight out of the microphone. And then the uh, high pass filter did uh, cut out a lot of the low end, a lot of the low end rumble. So as I mentioned, you know, straight out of the microphone, I think the, the uh, sound quality sounds really good. And then there is a decibel drop uh, coming from the back of the mic. So it is gonna uh, cut out some of the uh, noise coming from the back of the microphone, um, which is a good thing if you're gonna be um, using this mic uh, for interview style type of shooting. Now, if you're gonna be vlogging, um, one of the things that you could do is if you're not gonna be in front of the camera, you can just simply flip this uh, microphone around so that as you're vlogging and you're showing uh, whatever you know, you're showing that's in front of you, then the mic could be facing you and then the audio would be the same as if uh, you were to have the camera pointed looking at you with the mic looking at you as well. So you have a few options there, but sound quality wise, I think the microphone sounds really great um, without any post processing. And as you're able to hear in our demonstration using the wind muff, 
There is a little bit of a dip on the clarity of the, uh, of the mic, but that's to be expected. Almost any microphone will have a dip in the clarity uh, when you use a wind muff, but the dip was very subtle. It, it wasn't a huge difference. Uh, your voice is very, still very audible. Your voice is still clear. So whether you're using the wind muff or just using the mic uh, as is, I think sound quality sounds really good on this mic. Now, as far as the microphone picking up ambient noise, when we were using the microphone outside, uh, it did pick up some of the ambient noise, but it didn't pick it up in a way where it was distracting. So it does a really good job there to cut out some of the ambient noise that's going on around the microphone. Now, indoors, uh, one thing to keep in mind is that it is going to pick up ambient noise. So the further away that you have this microphone from you, the more of the room that it's going to pick up and less of your voice. So if you're going to be using this microphone indoors in a studio environment such as our setup right now, uh, you're going to benefit quite a bit if you can get this microphone as close as possible to your, um, to your mouth. Uh, so just keep that in mind, the closer to you that you can get this mic, the better that it's going to sound on camera. The further away from you, the more that it's going to pick up the ambient noise in the room. So if you're in a semi noisy environment, such as uh, our studio right now, there is a little bit of noise going on outside. So not sure if this uh, lav mic is picking it up or not, but in situations like that, you definitely don't want to have this microphone too far away from you because it's going to pick up ambient noise around it. So the closer to you, the better. And now for the million dollar question. Is the Comica CVM V30 Pro worth your hard earned money? As of the recording of this review, this mic sells for $53.99. I think it's a great bargain for what you're getting out of this microphone. The most important aspect of a mic is sound quality. And I think this mic does a great job as far as the sound quality that comes out of it. And if, especially if you're not planning to do any post-production after you record your videos, the uh, audio coming out of this mic, I think sounds very good. So, and as I mentioned, if you do a little post-production, it's gonna sound even better. So at $53.99, I think it's a great bargain for the cost of this mic. Uh, there's other microphones that are uh, similar to this shotgun mic that cost a whole lot more than what this might cost. We're talking about $150, $200 range. And I think at the $53.99 range, this microphone is a great bargain. I don't think you'll be disappointed if you were to pick up one of these mics um, at $53.99. So overall, I think uh, this microphone is definitely worth um, the cost of the product. This is gonna complete my review of the Comica CVM V30 Pro. If you found some value in this video, I would appreciate it if you were to hit the thumbs up button. If you're not subscribed to my channel, please subscribe that way you get notified the next time we upload a new video. And on that note, I will see you on the next review.